Welcome to ITTV. My name is Mr. Gurdiv and I am your science teacher. The title of this lesson is Fire Extinguishers. Introduction Typically, a fire comes from a chemical reaction between oxygen in the atmosphere and some sort of fuel, wood or gasoline for example. Of course, wood and gasoline do not spontaneously catch on fire just because they are surrounded by oxygen. For the combustion reaction to happen, we have to heat the fuel to its ignition temperature. Therefore, it is important for the trainer to know the types of fire and how to use each fire extinguisher. In a lab, fires can occur anywhere. The gas that we are using might catch fire. The electrical supply that we have in the lab, there may be a short circuit. Chemicals may catch on fire. We need to be aware of the types of materials in the lab that can catch fire. We already know that in the lab, for our chemicals, we have symbols that say explosive, flammable. So we need to know what these chemicals are and most important, what sort of fire extinguisher we need to use for the different possible fires that we can have. So firstly, what is a fire extinguisher? It is the first line of defense meaning the first thing that we can do to stop a fire is to use the fire extinguisher that is available in the lab we need to also remember that for a combustion to occur we need three things we need the oxygen we need the fuel and we need a heat supply if these three are all present a fire may occur the fire triangle, fuel sources, furniture, paraffin stoves, gas bottles, cooking equipment, timber walls, cladding, plastic layers, insulation, clothing or bedding, electrical appliances, etc. Influences on the heat retained, type and thickness of walls and the roof construction. Thin steel sheets allow heat to radiate out faster than timber boards. Influences on ventilation, the number and position of doors and windows. Spaces between floors, walls and roof. Changes occur due to windows breaking, walls opening, people intervening, structures collapsing, etc. Fire extinguishers. One of the most important portable fire prevention tools. The frontline defense for fire prevention is a fire extinguisher. Types of fire extinguishers. Water for wood, paper, textile and solid fires. Do not use on liquid, electrical or metal fires. Powder for liquid and electrical fires. Do not use on metal fires. Foam. For use on liquid fires, do not use on electrical or metal fires. Carbon dioxide for liquid and electrical fires, do not use on metal fires. As you can see, we have a lot of different types of fire extinguishers. Why? Well, the thing is, students, we need to understand what is coming out of the fire extinguisher that is going to help stop the fire and what is actually on fire. Example, if you put water with oil, what will happen is the water is more dense than oil. So what will happen is the water will go under the oil, but the oil is on top and it's still on fire. In fact, the water will help to spread the oil out a little bit, which means the fire now can spread easily. So this is what we are saying to you. We need to know the type of fire extinguisher and where and when to use that fire extinguisher. It's not so easy as, oh, there's a fire. Take the first extinguisher and just use it. You got to know the type of fire you have 
and what is the correct extinguisher to use. So, the types of extinguishers we have. In general, we try to keep it as simple as possible. If you have a water fire extinguisher, we use it on solid material, wood, paper, things like that. We will not use this on electrical fires because water can cause a short circuit with the electrical supply. We won't use it on liquid because, like I said, water will spread the liquid out or if we have oil, the water will go under the oil. Powder. Powder is a very good fire extinguisher that we can use for most things. We use it for liquids because the powder will sit on top of the liquid and stop the oxygen. We can use it for electrical fires because the powder, again, will sit on top of the wiring and stop the oxygen supply. The one thing we won't use powder for is for metals because the hot metal, the burning metal, can react with the powder and cause another reaction. So we avoid those. The next is foam. Foam is mainly used for liquid because the foam is light, low density, it has air in it, so it will sit on top of the liquid. But you cannot use foam for electrical fires because the foam contains a bit of moisture in it. Therefore, there might be a reaction or a short circuit like we said. The next one that is very important is the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide we can use for liquid and electrical because it is gas. And the carbon dioxide will stop oxygen from reaching the liquid or the electrical wiring that is on fire. So once again, make sure you know the type of fire extinguishers, yes, and what you use each different one for. Types of fire and fire extinguishers that are suitable for use. A Class A fire. This fire involves flammable solids except metals such as wood, paper, cloth or other flammable material. The type of fire extinguisher should be water, foam or dry powder. Class B. Fires that involve liquids such as petrol, kerosene, diesel, paint and varnish. The type of fire extinguisher we should use are foam, dry powder or carbon dioxide. Class C. Fires that involve gases such as LPG, LNG and oxygen. Here we should use the dry powder or the carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Class D fires. Fires that involve metals such as magnesium, aluminium, sodium and potassium. Here we should use dry powder fire extinguishers. Class E, fires that involve electrical appliances. Again, here we should use dry powder or carbon dioxide. Class F, fires that involve fats and oils. Here we should use dry powder or carbon dioxide extinguishers. ABC dry powder is a class B, C and E fire extinguisher to fight moderate risk fires. When used on hot surfaces and in areas that cause respiratory congestion, these particles form a barrier to oxygen disassociation, thereby preventing re-ignition. It also does not conduct electricity and has the ability to be a heat shield and quickly extinguish a fire. Fire Blanket Fire Blanket is a fire extinguisher. However, this fire blanket cannot be used for all types of fire. This fire blanket is made of glass fiber coated with fire-resistant material. The way it works is to stop the supply of air into the fire. How a fire extinguisher works Number 1. Remove the safety pin from the fire extinguisher. Ensure that the fire extinguisher is positioned upright. Number 2. Aim the nozzle of the fire extinguisher at the base of the fire. Ensure that you are at a distance of around 2 to 2.5 meters from the fire. Number 3. Squeeze the handle on the top of the fire extinguisher. Finally, number 4. Spray evenly on the entire fire source by sweeping the nozzle from side to side.
Carry out an audit on fire extinguishers. Check the expiry date. Make sure of the location of the fire extinguishers in the school emergency route plan. Make sure that the seal of approval from the Jabatan Bomber and Penyelamat Malaysia is correct. Make sure of the type of fire extinguishers you have. And make sure of the number of fire extinguishers you have. Two examples of a Class B fuel are what and what. So remember, Class B fires, everyone, are when liquids catch fire. So when we're talking about liquids, we're talking about things like petrol, diesel, ethanol, things we have in the lab that could possibly catch fire. So which one is correct? Good, the answer is C, grease, oil and paint. Which class of fire is the carbon dioxide fire extinguisher designed for? So remember, carbon dioxide extinguishers we want to use for liquid fires or if there is a gas fire. So we are looking at A, Class B and Class C fires. What will happen if water is used to extinguish a fire caused by a flammable liquid? Remember what we said, students, if water hits the liquid, water will cause the liquid to spread out, which means the fire now will spread out. So the answer that is most correct here is C. The fire will light up uncontrollably. Which direction do you need to aim when extinguishing a fire? Remember students what we said, we want to aim at the base. If we can stop the oxygen at the base, the fire will go out. So our answer is B, the base of the fire. The diagram shows steps for using a fire extinguisher in the wrong order. Arrange the diagram shown in the correct order. So remember students, what we want to do here is remove the safety pin first. So this one would be C. Then we want to aim the nozzle at the base. This is A. Next, we want to squeeze the handle. This would be E. Followed by spraying evenly, which would be B. And finally, after we've extinguished the fire, we want to open the windows and let air come in to ventilate. We don't want to do that earlier because remember, fire wants oxygen. So the correct sequence is C, A, E, B, D. So remember students, when we're dealing with fire in the lab, we need to know a few things. Firstly, we need to know the type of extinguishers we have and what we use the extinguishers for. Most important, because we have different types of possible fires that we could have in a lab. Fires caused by metals, fire caused by electrical short-circuiting, fire caused by flammable liquids such as ethanol or our greases or our oils catching fire. We can also have fires because of gases in the lab. So make sure you know what extinguisher to use and also make sure, students, you realize how to use a fire extinguisher. Pull the pin, correct. Make sure you're aiming at the base of the fire. Press the nozzle and spray evenly. Yep. Make sure you're about two meters away so that you don't accidentally get caught uh, by a fire. And finally, remember we have the fire blanket in the lab. The fire blanket is if someone catches fire, get the blanket and quickly put the blanket over them because that will help put out that fire on the sleeve of the lab coat or if some material catches fire on the table, like paper or something like that. 
This is all for today's lesson. Thank you very much.